There's a couple of improvements we want to make to our original algorithm. Before, we were using one axis of accelerometer data and finding peaks in it and counting each of those peaks as representing a single step. Um, so rather than using one axis, it's going to be better to use the total acceleration magnitude. Um, you see here in some sample data, I've plotted the accelerations for the three axes separately. Each of those axes represents an acceleration in a different direction. So X would be laterally, Z would be into or out of the screen of your phone, and Y would be up and down. Um, but when a phone moves in three-dimensional space, I want to track what's the maximum acceleration in any direction. And you get that with a vector sum, where you add up the X and the Y and the Z separately, and then you find the length of the vector, or the magnitude of the acceleration. So that's the first step. Rather than using one axis, let's use the vector sum. We're already doing this. We're counting peaks, where a peak is defined as a value that is larger than its adjacent two values in the time series data. But we also want to use a threshold, because we only want to count a peak as a step if it's large enough to, that we feel confident that it really is a step. So you can see in the graph down here, there's all kinds of small peaks um, but these don't represent an acceleration that's strong enough to probably count as an actual step. So we want to figure out where is a dotted line we could draw, and we'll only count steps as peaks above that line. But how can you decide where to draw that line? Before we look at the math, I want to point out two features of what we're trying to do. Um, the threshold is not a threshold above zero. It's a threshold above wherever the mean of our data is. Um, this is probably a poor example to show because the mean looks to be very close to zero. Um, but you could imagine a situation where your phone was constantly accelerating in different directions. Um, and in that case, the mean might not be around zero. So the second question is, how far above your mean should you make your threshold? And the answer is it depends on how spread out your data is around that mean. Standard deviation is a standard statistic that you can use for measuring how spread out your data is around a mean. So what we want to do is we want to first calculate the mean of the data, and then you can set your thresholds to be a certain number of standard deviations above the mean. And it doesn't have to be an integer number of standard deviations. You could say 1.5 standard deviations, for example. This is sort of a way of normalizing your data, um, because the way that standard deviation is defined, you're guaranteed that 68% of your data is going to fall within one standard deviation of the mean, and 95% will fall within two standard deviations. So for example, if you decided to set your thresholds to be two standard deviations above the mean, then what you're saying is you only want to count the 5% of values that are the most extreme as being potentially steps. Um, and you're only actually going to count the ones that would be on the positive side, because on the negative side, they wouldn't count as peaks. Looking back at the graph, maybe that's reasonable, because we're asking, where should we draw our dotted line? And if you choose two standard deviations above the mean, you're saying that you only want 5% of the recorded data points to lie above your dotted line. So I guess the real question is, how much of your data do you think likely represents the peak values? And that's your judgment that you should use in setting your threshold. All right, come on back next time, and we'll look at how to implement it.